I'm here to talk about the structure of the harp, about the anatomy, how it all goes together and all the different parts that go into the harp. When I look at a harp, I usually think of it in terms of three different things. One, it's a beautiful artistic being. It, they're just such beautiful looking instruments. The second is, is that they're musical instruments, which is what they're really for, is to come out and be able to produce and sing out beautiful music. The third thing that they are is also mechanical. We have to have all this mechanics in order to be able to modulate, to be able to change keys, to be able to change uh, uh, in the music that we're playing. And the main part is the body. The body is, is uh, uh, what the strings are attached to, and then the strings come up to the neck. And then the neck is, is held up from the body with the, with the pillar. On the pedal harp over here, usually we refer to the pillar as the column. So this would be the column on the pedal harp. This would be the neck. Sometimes this is called the harmonic curve. And then the body. Mostly they're made out of, for the structure of the instrument, for the strength to hold it together and to withstand all the pressure, most of them are made out of maple or some other hardwood. On this harp, the column is made out of maple. The neck is made out of a maple plywood. On this harp, it's made out of uh, koa, or it can be made out of bubinga. Some harps are made out of walnut. On the lever harps, sometimes there's a variation in that. But you could get ma maple harps too in lever harps also. So the most of it, the structure of it, with the strength of it is these hardwoods that hold it together. But the hardwoods, don't sing very well. They're very dull sounding. They don't resonate. They don't vibrate very well. They do pass on vibration, but, them, but in themselves, they don't voice very well. So sound boards are the parts that the strings come out of here, and this is the sound board here. Sometimes it's called the table, especially in different music. It's referred to as a table, but uh, the sound boards on most harps, they're made out of softwood, a pine, and usually they're made out of spruce. Different, there's different varieties, different breeds of spruce. They can also be made out of uh, uh, cedar, and, uh, and in different cases, different woods are used. Uh, but mostly they're soft woods so that they vibrate well, so that they sing out really well. The bodies of the harps are made in different sizes and different shapes. Some of them are smaller, some of them are larger, some of them are wider. <laughs> Uh, uh, this body on this harp is actually a curved back body, sometimes called a round back body. This harp, this harp here has a back of a body that's called a staved back. The body itself is actually six sides. There's the soundboard and then there's five sides around the back. And so the bodies can be made out of different things. These staves are solid pieces of wood for each stave that goes down. On the bodies that are rounded, the, back, the round back on these, har of these is usually a plywood. Um, and the bodies are made around a, a substructure. There's a frame inside that the curved plywood is applied to. And that interior of that has to be really strong. Because this, this harp, for example, is under over 2,000 pounds of pressure. A lever harp, such as this, I don't know the numbers as well, but I would think that this harp is probably under any, lever harps can be under anywhere from seven or 800 pounds up to slightly over a thousand pounds of pressure on there. So that's a lot of pressure. You think that, of course, these good, solid, strong pieces of wood that make up the necks and the column, they're really strong and the bodies are really strong. But the sound boards where the strings are pulling on, that's a soft wood. So it has to be structurally made to withstand all that pressure. Not only that pressure for the moment that it's, that it's tuned up and strung up, but for that moment, uh, for all that pressure that's on there, 365 days a year, for year after year after year after decade after decade. So the harp has to be made structurally to hold itself together under all this pressure all the time. So there are different ways that that's done. I won't get into that, but the bodies have to be made very strong. Because let's think about it. All of the sound is pulling the sound, pulling upwards. That, in turn, you'll notice that the soundboards actually belly up. They pull up a little bit. 
over time, this keeps coming up. That's because of all that pressure that's pulling up on it. Well, when this comes up, if you think about it, how, what happens to the sides of the body? Well, as the soundboard comes up, the sides of the body actually want to pull in. Because that's where does it get this wood to come up? It's not stretching. There's pressure on there. So it, it, the, the sides of the body want to pull in. But you keep, the heart makers know that that's not a really good thing. So they build substructures inside. They build it structurally to hold, it, uh, to hold that body's shape and to hold it over time. The, the bodies are made of like different parts too. Like on this harp here, this has got an extended wing. It's called the wing of the harp over here. The, the wing of the soundboard, it comes out and it's extended out. This soundboard, sometimes we refer to as a regular flat soundboard, a straight soundboard, because the soundboard ends at the, at the side of the body. So that's a straight finish over here where the other harp that I just showed you has a wing on it that actually extends out, extends out beyond the body in order to make a bigger soundboard. So the soundboards have all of this pressure from the strings pulling up on it. Now these strings here are actually going to want to rip right up through the wood, right? What's to stop them? Well, on the lever harps, it's usually not that difficult because the pressure is so much less that this, this part here at the base of the string here, these are called, usually referred to as eyelets. Some people call them grommets. But anyway, this piece here is actually a hardened. On this harp here, it's actually a brass piece. It's a brass cylinder that, that is inserted into the soundboard. And that is enough to withstand all of that pressure, the string pulling up against that wood. It gets, it gets supported by that, uh, by that eyelet. When you look on the inside, on the other side of the string, where the string knot is pulling up against it, there's invariably another piece of wood that's on the inside. That piece acts like the bridge, like the bridge on a violin. It actually uses to, uh, to support it, to strengthen it. Uh, that is the piece that's inside that, that keeps the soundboard, these soft soundboards, from pulling up and cracking along with some other structural elements, but that is a big one that helps to stop that. So on the other harp over here, we can see that there's a different, a different way that this is done. See, this has eyelets on it too here. In this case, these are white, uh, 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 a plastic uh, eyelet. But you notice that there's another piece here. This piece is on top of the soundboard, this piece does not go into the soundboard. It's called the top center strip. This center strip is literally just glued right on top of the soundboard. The soundboard completely goes across and the center strip is glued on top of it. The cent this center strip, why do we need another piece here where we don't need it on the, uh, the lever harp? Well, the reason is, is that this harp is under a lot more pressure, a lot more pressure. And Very interesting thing about this piece of wood. If you want to break a piece of wood and you don't have a saw, but you got a drill, drill a whole bunch of holes in it. Don't get scared, because the fact is, is it's made for this. But this piece of wood, if you drill the whole bunch of pieces, uh, drill a whole bunch of holes in a normal piece of wood, and then pressed on those holes, they would just break. But this piece of wood here is a special breed of tree that resists cracking from hole to hole to hole to hole. So actually this piece of wood, actually its tendency, if it should crack, is to go sideways so that it doesn't connect hole to hole to hole. Now on some very, very old harps after decades, after 50, 60, 70, some cases 80 years, you may see some of that pressure starting to show up on the lower side over here between these, these are called dots, but they basically are an eyelet. It's a pressure point for the string, where the string's pressing against. Um, so, uh, uh, and on the inside of this, on the back side, where the where the where the strings are, there's also an inside center strip. And uh, on many pedal harp, by many different m manufacturers, there's actually not only a center strip that that runs opposite this on the inside, but there might be another piece that's running somewhere underneath my finger here. That is another soundboard support. It's a brace be, to help hold the soundboard together over time. Now, on 
most harps and, and almost virtually, I shouldn't say virtually, but just about every pedal harp made, the soundboard looks like it's the sound, like the grain of the sound of the, of the soundboard is up and down. Actually, the soundboard runs this direction. If you could see this, and you can from the inside, get curious about this, get a flashlight, look on the inside at the back of the soundboard, and you're going to see that there are fine lines, just like this, that you see here, but they're running the other way. They're running uh, left and right, horizontal to the floor. Now, that actually, the reason is that is that the soundboard, that the grains are running this way. If you can see it from the side, they're running this way, is, is that is that this way the wood is its strongest. This way you can see that in the grains that it could just split down there. It's actually called quarter sawn wood. So the wood actually runs this way. Um, and there are boards, the boards are, are about, about four inches or so wide, three or four inches, and they go up and they're all glued together. Now why can't they have a, a, a one piece? Well, because trees are round, so you can't get a, a, a piece of wood with, that's straight like this because the tree gets round, so you can only get it for so long of a distance before the, part, the, grains, the grains start curving, and you don't want the curved grains. That's one of the reasons, excuse me, it's one of the reasons why harps are so expensive. The wood for the soundboard is the most select piece of wood cut in a tree. So that's basically how the bodies are, are, are structured. On the, cor on the corners of the bodies, often you see a different piece of wood, and these are really protective pieces of wood. These are really hard, because the soundboard here, and this veneer is spruce, which is what the soundboard is. If there was no paint on here, or lacquer, or varnish, or whatever, you wanna, whatever term you want to use, if this was the raw wood, I could take my fingernail and press it into it. It's really soft, like I said, spruce is very soft. Uh, the softwoods that are used for the soundboards are soft. Um, so these are very, this is, they want to protect this out here because people tend to, you know, bump it and you want to move it, you want to make it last, you want it structurally strong. So we put, uh, they put harder pieces of wood on the outside here just as a protection for it. On the lever harp over here too, you'll see that they have the same thing. They have another piece of hardwood that's right here. It's kind of hard to tell the difference from this, from the wood on the soundboard to this, but uh, uh, but actually there is a piece right here that is a harder piece of wood that's just designed to make it stronger.